In today's lecture, we're going to talk about the tools you'll need to finally start your web development journey. First, we're going to need a decent text editor. Visual Studio Code is a free and powerful text editor. I used Sublime Text before, but shifted to VS Code on my recent projects. I highly recommend it. It comes with different features that will be discussed throughout this course. Next, we need a web browser. Obviously, since it is the one that will display the web page for deployment and testing. We're going to use Google Chrome as it comes with Chrome Developer Tools that is a great help for us in our development. Another tool that is a must for any developer for either building a website or any other project is Git and Git Account as it enables version control systems. So what is version control system and why should you care? BCS is a tool that records the modification done to the code. Basically, it is the backup of the progress we made to the project. The two main features of BCS is, first is repository, which is like when you save a file with different file name to track the modification. For example, in the file thesis, we have thesis final, thesis final na talaga, and so on. Number two, copy of work is much needed if you are working in a team. Your team can work on different copies of the project and the changes won't affect the real project. The team can merge the project once everything checks out. Let's install the app we need. We're going to use Windows 10 operating system throughout this course. We will skip the installation of Google Chrome as I assume all of you has already installed it on your system. To install Visual Studio Code, search VS Code on your web browser. And click Download for Windows. The website automatically detects your operating system and suggests the latest version. Once the download is complete, you can install the app on its default setting. The next app that we're going to install is Git. Type Git on your web browser and select Windows. Choose the latest version of the app for download. Once the download is finished, you can install Git on your local machine. You can use the default setting for your installation. But in adjusting your path environment page, choose Use Git for Windows Command Prompt. And in Configure the Terminal Emulator to use with Git Bash page, choose Use Windows Default Console Windows. Upon successful installation, we should be able to access Git using our Command Prompt. To access Command Prompt, press Ctrl R on your keyboard and type CMD. Type git version to determine the version of the git currently installed. The next thing we need is to have our github account. To create a github account, go to github.com and press sign up for github. Complete the necessary information to create your own GitHub account. Upon successful login, you will lead to the GitHub landing page. We're going to create a repository, add code to the repository, and turn the repository to the one we can use to host the website. We're going to use Git commands to upload the codes from our local storage to the remote storage online. I encourage you to learn Git in depth because it is much needed in development. We're not going to discuss much Git on this course, but there are many tutorials online, or you can read the Git book. Just search Git book on your browser. To create a repository, click the new button and add the required information. We need to specify the name of our repository. Though optional, the description provides additional information about our repository.
we want to make our repository to remain public as we want to enable peer review in our website. Making the repository private will restrict others to access your website. We also need to check initialize this repository with a readme as we need to clone the repository in our local machine. To host the website, click the settings and navigate to GitHub page. Choose the source of the website, in our case, the master branch, and click save. On the GitHub page, you can see the web you can see the URL on where we can access our web page. Accessing the content of the URL, we display the content of readme.md since we don't have any files on our repository yet. The next thing we'll do is to download the copy of our repository and our local machine and add files to it. We're going to continue using command prompt to access our repository online as well as update our remote repository once we're finished. First, we need a location and where our repository should reside. I want the repository to reside in the drive D of my machine. To access any drive, all you have to do is type the drive letter followed by a colon. Next, I'm going to create a folder on where I will clone the copy of my repository. I use the make directory command of command prompt. Be careful on using space on the folder name you create with make directory command as it makes multiple folders instead of one. To access the recently created folder, I use cd, which stands for change directory followed by the name of the folder. Inside the folder, we can run the git command to clone our repository. Key in git clone followed by the web URL of our repository. The copy of the repository should be available in our machine. To access our repository, I'm going to use cd again to open the folder. By typing dir, we'll display the details of the files inside the folder. As you can see, there is only one file in our repository. Let's take a look at our repository in GUI. As you can see, the content in our command prompt is the same with our Windows Explorer. To start creating our web page, to start creating our web page, let's open up the folder using Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code should open with access to the folder with files listed on the left. Let's create a new file that should contain the code of our web page. Save the file with file name index.html. To easily create our web page, we're going to use the boilerplate available at Visual Studio Code. To access the boilerplate of an HTML document, type exclamation point and press tab on your keyboard. This command should include the codes necessary to start our web page development. Let us edit the file and add a code of our own. Fret not if you don't understand the meaning of this code. We're going to talk about more this in depth 
on our next lessons. Save the file. And let us open the web page on our web browser. As you can see, the changes we made on the code is reflected on the web page opened in our web browser. But we but but when we refresh the code but when we refresh the URL on our Git repository, nothing changed. The reason for this is we haven't updated our repository on our remote storage yet. To update our repository, we're going to execute some more git commands. Git status show us the status of our repository. It basically tells us that there is one change that happens in our local repository different on our remote repository. And it suggests us to add the file in our remote repository. To do so, we can type git add followed by the file name. Or we can just key in dot or period and press enter to include all files on the folder. If we check git status again, we can see that all systems are green and we are ready for commit. To commit the change, key in git commit minus m which stands for message and key in the message included in our commit. The command lists the files that will be changed from our local from our local repository to our remote repository online. To finally update our online repository, we need to execute one last git command, git push. Once successful, we can see that our online repository is updated with the file we made on our local repository. If we check the URL again and include index.html, the file that we created offline and uploaded on our, on our online repository, we can see the output identical to our local file. Let us update our web page and explore how we deal with these changes. Once we change our web page, we can refresh our we can refresh our local file and see the changes that we made. To update our online repository, all we have to do is repeat the steps to execute the commands we did before. First, we need to add the file by executing the get add command. Next is we need to make a commit request with a message. And finally, run git push to update all the files from local to online repository. Once we refresh the web page, you can see that the output of the online repository is the same as your local repository. In case you have problems loading the output of your online repository, kindly clear your cache to reset the content of your web browser.